welcome to this week's piece. Actually, this is an entire set, but we're only doing the nightstand because we're going to make it match the bed that we did last week. So it has quite a bit of damage, mostly because these are made of pine and pine is a very soft wood, so they get dings and scratches fairly easily. So I just went through, filled with my germs putty and sanded them down, gave them a scuff sand. And then I did a quick clean with my Chalk Mountain Cleaner. These were actually a dream set to work on because they were just, I mean, there was, they were easy. You guys know I usually have a ton of repairs to do and just to not have to do repairs was incredible. I don't normally like newer pieces, but I just felt like these were so charming and they kind of had like an old school vibe to them. So I was happy to pick them up and I got a really good deal. So that's a win. Aside from having to fill in the dings and whatnot, I just tightened up any of the legs that were a bit loose. And I got this tiny toolkit from Linda. Thank you so much, Linda. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I steal my son's tiny toolkit. I buy him real tools, but they're miniature sized and I love them so much. So now I have my own and he actually thought this set was for him. It was not. So I'm going to start with this piece upside down because I need to blend the legs and I'm just doing a very, very subtle blend, but it'll give just a nice extra touch at the end. So I'm starting with blackboard at the very bottom of the legs and when I put it on, I'm going to go a bit higher than I want it to finish and then I'm going to take iron gate, which is the dark gray, and I'm going to add that. And then as they meet in the middle, I will take a blending brush and blend the two colors together and kind of work them up and down, back and forth, in the swirls. You guys know I'm not super crazy about my blends. I just do what feels right in the moment and what I think will make the piece look the best for what I'm blending on at the moment. And you'll notice I do clean my blending brush quite a bit because the black is obviously dark, 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 and I don't want that to go too high into the gray. So I just try and make sure when it starts getting a little too muddied, I will just wipe it off on a towel. And if it gets a little too difficult to wipe it, just wipe it off on the towel. I will spray it with my Mr. Bottle and then clean it that way. And when you guys are doing legs, it is so, so, so much easier to do it upside down because you can kind of see all the angles, make sure you're not missing anything. There is 360 degrees that you're going to miss something on. I can't tell you how many times I've missed. So I just, it's easier upside down. Just do it. How lucky is this? <laughs> it's getting painted gray. A very similar color to what it already is. So I didn't have to do anything crazy to cover. This was like one coat magic, just lovely. Got so lucky in that regard. So that was awesome. The top, since it had quite a bit of damage on there and I had to sand it back, um, pine over especially the knots can bleed through. So I did want to make sure I sealed that in. So I just took a spray shellac and sprayed just the top. I didn't have to do anywhere else. But because the top did go through the finish and there were a couple knots on the top, I just wanted to save myself any hassle later. So again, sprayed with shellac and then I could paint over it like it never happened. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. So like I said, I'm making this match the bed just because I typically get a better price for things if I can do them in sets. So I photographed and then did some quick editing on the bed and then turned it into decoupage paper. So now I have the exact replicas, only mini versions of the headboard and footboard on the bed to now go on this nightstand. And I... You guys, I don't know. I was just so pleased by this. So the way I do my papers is I have a printer that can print the largest size is a 13 by 19 page. I just put some gift wrap tissue paper 
over the top, you can see why the edges are all messed up. I wrap the edges around and tape them down to my general photographic paper and then send it through the printer. It prints out whatever I tell it to and it's lovely. That just means that I have to clean up the edges and cut it out. Now, if you wanted to do this, and you can do this literally with any picture that you have, you can go to Zazzle, upload your very own photo, and print it out. And they will ship you just your decoupage paper, whether you do the 10 pound or the 18 pound, or if you want to do, they have larger sizes, they can print much larger than I can, or you can do small sizes. I mean, it's there's so many possibilities to do it. So I do, I just, I love Zazzle for that because I can just go there, I can upload my images and then print them out if I need to. Um, order a bunch at a time because sometimes their shipping takes longer and shipping is quite expensive considering you're getting shipped paper. So if you can order multiple prints of something, I think that's the best way to go about it and save money. So I just wanted to throw these tips in there for you. Or you can do what I do and print everything at home. Um, like I said, I have a large printer, but you can do this out of your standard size printer. They would just be standard sizes. Okay, since I'm going to be doing decoupage paper over this, I want to make sure I have a lighter base to work my paper onto so that the colors show up. And I thought that since I had already used this color in the waves and it was light enough that it would be a great choice to have underneath the paper so you can do white, um, a light gray would have worked, just anything that's light enough to let the papers really stand out. Because if you put the papers over something dark, the dark's gonna come through and you won't be able to see them as well. So even though these are dark papers, you don't want anything too dark underneath them because it will drown out everything and you won't be able to see it. So that's why I went this route and I thought that it would just be a nice, just a nice color underneath. I apply my decoupage papers with my satin poly. It's the stuff that I always use. I just do a thin layer for this type of thin paper. You'll notice when I do different types of paper, like if I'm doing wallpaper, I'll do quite a bit more, but since this paper is so, so incredibly thin, I just like using a very light amount as my base. And then that lets it go on and it will stick to where I need it to, but then I can add Quite a bit more to the top and the paper is so thin that it just completely seals all the way through to the underside and it essentially just becomes part of the piece which is awesome. Now I'm going slowly on the side there because there is just a gap for the door and I'm pushing it in just a tiny bit in that area. I like using my hands. I've got extra tools like brayers and things and sometimes I use them but I almost always go back to just using my fingers. I find that they're the best tools so um, you'll see me use them a lot. And then I'm just trying to go in to all the areas, make sure it's pushed down and that it has enough room and then I will actually just use my brush to get everything in to where it needs to go and smooth out all the wrinkles. So you can kind of see quite a few wrinkles on there the brush will actually smooth all of these out and then as it dries it will shrink up and those will essentially disappear. I did use my brush to push the papers into the edges there and that kind of broke them away so that I could open the door and then I just used the brush to fold the paper underneath and around the edges to give it a clean look on the outside 
and then the inside will touch up later. So I'm starting with Goblin Gray, Ocean Spray, Blackboard, and my Iron Gate. And those are the only colors that I need for this because the papers themselves have all the other colors that I had to paint with on the headboard and footboard. So again, just another thing that saved me time and product as well. So that's kind of nice. Now since I'm blending these in, I always find it's easier to do skies. So I will almost always place my papers at the bottom of something and then it's much easier for me to paint in clouds and skies than it is to do anything else and I know that those are quick and easy. So that's why I did the placement at the bottom and didn't worry about painting any more waves. I'm going to start by adding more Iron Gate. This is now the second coat and that's going to give me my wet surface to work and blend on. And you can see as of right now it does not match at all, but we're going to add a little bit of the black. I blend directly over the top of my papers. I'll kind of get an idea with the colors butted up next to it and then figure out if I need to go darker or add any other colors or whatever as I go. So here I'm just like, okay, I can just do the black directly over the top. And if I do it over the sky portion and just leave the water alone, that means I can completely put in my own sky and I'm not trying to compete with the one that's there. Once I get the depth that I like with the black and the gray, I can go in with the goblin gray and just start swirling in these clouds. They don't have to be perfect. I literally just do tiny, tiny circles. This is a fan brush. Use whatever brush you have. It doesn't matter. They all work. Um, so you want to get not too much paint on your brush, but as it's mixing in with the other colors, you'll notice that you'll have to re-dip some more and, or clean it off however you kind of see fit. Then I will take my larger blending brush and you want to swirl out the bottom of the clouds. Do not swirl out the top. The top you want a harsh edge on. So just swirl out the bottoms. And then once you're finished with that, you can clean off that brush again and just do back and forth swiping motions. And that's essentially how I made this guy in the painting. So that's how I can make this guy here. And you can see it just pushes everything back and makes it look like it belongs together. And I just love that. It's so fast, so effective, just wonderful. And the rest of these we're just gonna speed through cause it's the exact same process. Just super easy, blending in the colors, throwing on the clouds, blending them out. That's it. Now the waves were a tiny bit trickier, but here's what I did. So I tried to deepen up the background and then I added some of the goblin gray to get the same tone going on with the water. And then I realized that was just a bit too light. So I added some more black to it just so that I had some shadows to work with. And then I could take a wispier brush, in this case it's the fan brush, and if you match up the waves that are already on there, that fluid motion there, it doesn't really matter what you do with the rest of the waves. So the waves to the left, I'll finish out that stroke and then the rest of them don't matter. So that was a fun trick too. And then of course I'm using the exact same gilding color that I used on the headboard and footboard and just added a bit of gilding to this to make it just more cohesive with the bed frame.
Now I'm going to throw this thing back upside down because, again, with legs like these, it's just easier that way. And I'm going to seal the entire piece with poly. So I'll start with this section upside down, make sure I have all the legs situated, and then once these are finished and dried enough, I can flip it back over and do the top. So the chamfered edges on these feet are rubbish. So I get these from the dollar store. They're just little felt pads. They have a great stick to them and they'll go on and protect the floor and also protect the bottom of the feet. Oh, hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. I just thought this was the greatest idea I've ever had. <laughs> so initially I was going to match these by taking a cast of the trim on the bed and adding it to the piece. And then I just had this idea to try and get the same thing without having to paint to get it done faster. Oh my gosh, and you guys know I have my decoupage papers on Zazzle. They're old photography pictures that I've done. Um, and this I was like, you know what, I can, I'm great at editing. I can totally do this. And so I took photographs of these. And then on top of that, I did my other paintings too and turned those into decoupage papers. Like I edited out all of the hardware and the drawer lines and all that. So they're actual, the finished paintings that can be put onto future pieces. I am just, I'm so excited about it. I think it's the craziest thing ever, but so fun. So that's what I did here is I, obviously I didn't print mine off of Zazzle. I have a pro printer at my house that does 13 by 19. So that's what I did here. And these ones are obviously long and skinny. So I doubled them up and then placed them on and then just painted in the tissue paper as I normally paint in my decoupage papers. And I think it is just a great way to match this without doing double duty on the work because you guys know that this took me a really long time but this took me minutes and I think that's just incredible because we want to be doing that kind of stuff working faster to you know smarter not harder and all that but so this is I love the way that this turned out we've got the blends on the legs to kind of complement how it goes from light to dark up in here and I just yeah cool I just, I'm I think this is so cool also I'm gonna mention <laughs> You guys got so upset with me for saying that I'm not an artist. I, I'm a furniture artist and I'm comfortable with that title. I love what I do to furniture. I think it is super fun and I learn, but I don't want to disrespect somebody who's been painting for years and years and perhaps has, you know, done a gallery showing or something like that. And like I said, the person who did the boat, I, I copied their, I, well, I copied, it looks nothing like theirs. But I took inspiration from their shit because they had that idea and they did that. And I'm just, you know, flailing essentially because I, I don't know. This is a new skill for me. I don't I don't really know what, what I'm doing. I'm just, like I said, hoping for the best as I paint it. So I'm a furniture artist. I hope you guys don't take that the wrong way. Um, I do really, really appreciate you guys so much. You're very, very encouraging. And I will continue to do these and continue to get better till one day I feel more comfortable being like, I am an artist and I can actually teach you guys something maybe. I mean, I hope you're learning along with me in the things that I am figuring out as I go. But as far as like instructing somebody to do this, I would, I'm not anywhere near, I, I don't, I don't know anything. <laughs> so, um, 
Anyways, thank you guys so much. Again, so close, so close to 10K. I can't even believe it. It'd be awesome. No, we wouldn't be there by this video, but it'd be cool if we were. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Um, oh, thank you to my members. We had our first live membership group video and that was really fun. You guys asked great questions. Um, it's the first Monday of every month and we go in depth. It's typically more businessy. So for those people who want to do that kind of stuff or need like specific instruction to a general idea and you guys can respond. I can respond immediately back with words instead of typing. I am rambling now. I'm so sorry. All right, we'll get you some photos. We've got a matching set now, very easily done. And I just think this is awesome. Oh, and I'll have obviously the papers linked below if you were to want to put one of my paintings on a piece of furniture. That's so weird, but awesome. Okay, you guys are amazing. I'll see you next week.